So guys, welcome back to the channel and part three of my SAS Pink Panther Land Rover build build series. So, we're up. Um, so in this part we're going to be working on the front. We'll have a look at some of the resin aftermarket stuff um, and get the front hopefully constructed um, and getting it looking like a Land Rover. Um, so without further ado, we'll head down to the bench and uh, we'll crack on with the build. So enjoy and I will see you all very shortly. Cheers. So here we are guys, we're back down at the bench. So from last time, which was part two, uh, we finished all of the chassis. We've got all the suspension on. It's been squared up, made sure everything is true, which it is, fits really well. Um, and obviously we added the, uh, the tow hook out of the spares box. Um, we are still whiting out a bit, unfortunately. <laughs> Not a lot I can do about that. So the chassis is finished. We did one wheel, um, actually on camera, um, and the other wheels, as I said, I've done off camera. So the wheels are all done. So we'll move that out of the way. And so today, in this part, we're going to try and get through as much of this as we can, but I don't want the video going on for, for ages and ages. Um, so we're going for part six. Or step six, which is the seats, gear, um, gear steer, cam brake, uh, shift levers to change from obviously four wheel drive, two wheel drive, etc. Um, and then construction of the front of the vehicle. So we've got the bonnet, the, the wings, dashboard, pedals, etc. Um, and then on to just finishing that off um, and marrying it up with the, the chassis itself. So during this part, we will be having a look because some of these, um, as I said at the start, I've got the Black Dog resin aftermarket set, uh, and some of these parts are replaceable with resin. So we'll compare the two um, and see if it makes a massive difference that we would uh, compare or replace um, the styrene kit parts for, for the resin. So that's what we're going to be doing. So step six is the seats, uh, gear levers, etc. So we'll start with the gear levers because what we're not going to do, or what I'm not going to do rather, is attach um, the seats prior to painting the main bit itself um, because I want to paint the seats separately so they can be weathered, etc. Um, separately to the main bit of the vehicle. So, what the kit is telling us is that we need parts B29, B28, B27 and B26, which are the seat parts. So we've located those, so 28, and we need 29. So they're the kit parts, they're the styrene parts. So we've got these kind of big kind of seat mounts um, here <coughs> with some racking etc and then we've got the actual seat, bottom of the seat itself. Um, so if we compare that to the resin, so this is the, the resin part. Again, we are whiting out a lot. If I switch that light off just for a second, we may see a bit better. There we go. So we've got the resin part here, which has got some nice detail on it, but it is actually a little bit not as wide as, as the kit seat. Um, but there is more kind of recessed detail on it, although we do have some on the uh, the kit seat itself. And then if we compare the backs, so again we've got more kind of recessed deal, detail on the resin part um, as opposed to the, the kit part itself. But the actual um, seat structure is is slightly different as well. 
So, what are we going to do about that? Let's pop that light back on. Hmm. So, for detail, yes, we're getting more from from the resin parts. Um, but we're going to have to cut off the styrene bit here and replace it. So the decision you have to make, I think, I bought the aftermarket set. There's lots in there, mainly stove stuff. Um, do we gain anything in the overall finish um, with the time and effort we have to put in to to the seats themselves? Or, or the parts that we're replacing with resin or PE or, or anything else? So just because you bought the aftermarket set doesn't mean you have to use all of it, is, is my kind of rule of thumb. Hmm. Decisions. So what we do? We'll put the seats to the side for one minute while I think about that, and we'll move on. So we're going to construct. So we're going to put the uh, the gear levers and things in first. Um, so they're styrene parts anyway. So nice and straightforward. We have no nothing to think about there. So we've got four pieces in total here handbrake, gear levers, shift levers between four wheel drive, um, differential locks and that sort of thing. So let's get those off the sprue. Obviously some of these are quite small so just be careful hold the piece or the part as you cut in because you don't want to lose lose it on the floor because chances are you're never ever going to see that again um, very little clean up required on those to be fair they're, they're fairly they're, they're a representation of, of what they're meant to be I guess um, so we'll just trim a little bit of that flash off today um, prior to a night shift um, always difficult on your first night shift to be sleeping all day because obviously you've slept the night before so I thought I'd take this opportunity while the house is quiet to uh, to get a bit of filming done and, and crack on with, uh, with the build um, some Good feedback so far from the guys on YouTube that have watched this, so thank you for that. It does give me the, the kind of impetus to carry on filming um, the video series. Um, so yeah, that's much, much appreciated. How long may it continue? Um, and as I say, if I enjoy doing this, then I, I will do more. Um, not every build, because it is quite time consuming, and as all of us time is precious um, but I certainly will do some more so anyway we're going to attach these parts so we've got the handbrake is going next to this the centre console here we've got what I think is the differential lock here so we're going to work from sort of the inside out it's easier to do it that way so let's get this piece here and as always we will just dry fit it just to make sure we don't need to trim anything or, and that fits perfectly so a little bit of extra thin as I say these parts are quite small so just be careful and that fits and there like so perfect and then the handbrake hmm we're going to fit in there 
is a question. So let's try and dry fit that first of all. And we have got a bit of a bit of an issue there with the handbrake that it doesn't quite fit true. And I think that's because I thought that was sort of some sort of locating pin there, but it isn't. It's just where it's come off the sprue. So we'll cut that off, make it nice and flush. And then hopefully So that's kind of our first problem that we've encountered. Hmm. Just double checking the instructions because I may have put something in the wrong place, but no, it looks looks like I'm putting it where it's supposed to be. It just doesn't doesn't fit. Ah, that'll be why, because I had it the wrong way around, so it does fit. So that's fine. So again, a bit of extra thin. on the part itself and that's why this dry fitting is I keep going on about it but it's something that I learnt a long time ago and it does just make your life a bit easier rather than gluing the part putting it on and realizing you've got it the wrong way round or it doesn't fit and you're trying to address it, it just makes things a bit more straightforward it's worth those few seconds of, uh, of trying to do that So they're both in place. We've got two more bits. So again, we'll work from the inside out because that's generally, generally easier rather than trying to get parts in. Now that I know is going to fit because although it's a small part, it is just a locating hole. And again, tweezers are your friend. So we know that fits, that's fine. So again, some extra thin just on the end. There we go. He says. Perfect. So we've got that bit attached there, and that's why working from the inside out is is easier because if I fitted this this part first and then trying to get that small bit in we're gonna we're gonna struggle a little bit so we have got a little bit of flash on there which we can just trim off that's fine and again we will dry fit it just to make sure we've got it in the right position and you can't it's, I don't know whether you call it muscle memory or um, if you're doing a lot of small parts and armour sort of tank holes and that sort of stuff where you got lots of grab handles and to me I just like to kind of have it in my head before I commit to glue as to where these parts are going to go and what, what it's meant to look like and then it kind of sticks you know for that couple of minutes sticks in your head so that when you're committing to glue then you you kind of have it in your mind's eye as to where things are going to go and how it's going to look um, and I, you know, everyone does it their own way but I find that beneficial and there we go although that doesn't look like it should be uh, sticking up quite as prominently as it is I think maybe that part's got a little bit a little bit out of shape like it's been in the, in the bag in the box so we'll just very gently manipulate that as best we can because what we don't want to do if we can help it is have to cut it and re-glue it because it's such a small part but that just gentle pushing it into place and manipulating it just a little bit seems to have done the trick we'll glue it in place and hopefully it's going to be where it needs to be now that just a little bit of manipulation And again, using the tweezers, just 
to make sure we're in the right spot and that's kind of proven working from the other side out because if I'd have done it the other way that would have been very problematic to get in there the little the little lever there so they're all in place and kind of subconsciously thinking about the seats um, personally and everyone's different um, I don't think what I'm going to gain from using the resin seats and the amount of cutting and, and stuff I'll have to do to these and the overall effect of the finished model is going to make that much of a difference um, so I'm going to leave the resin seats alone and I'm going to use these um, so we'll trim these up just take off where we've cut from the sprue um, very minor so the blade is enough we don't really need to go in with a sander or anything like that the blade is enough to uh, to achieve that so this is that bit there and again just trimming that up because the slightest thing that you think oh, I'll be fine once you commit to paint all of a sudden it becomes very very noticeable and almost once you, you finish the build phase and you come into paint and you, you have committed to paint um, can cause you <laughs> cause you some quite significant issues so yeah I'm happy with that it, it looks like it's supposed to look um, so yeah we'll, we'll glue that in place And this is the whole thing about these these aftermarket companies. Uh, you know, they're really good. They do add a lot of detail um, in the process. If you look at my page and bench updates and things of building the uh, Academy Bullfrog U.S. Marine uh, medium lift helicopter, um, and I've done quite a bit of scratch building on the interior of that, which I'll show at the end of this month. Uh, in fact, by the time this video is out, a bench update will probably be done. Um, so a little bit of scratch building in the rear, but in the front, the actual cockpit, um, I use the Edward coloured PE um, set. And, you know, with this aftermarket stuff, that just, it just enhances the model so much um, and makes your life really easy because there's no way I'm not good enough with it with a toothpick or a paintbrush to to replicate the level of detail of the dials and everything else so it, it's helped a lot um, and I also did the same with the Phantom um, and it made a big difference um, but just because you've got the aftermarket set doesn't mean you have to use it all um, you can pick and choose as you know and take the model as far as you want to go with it or you know personal preference at the end of the day and not everyone can afford the the aftermarket sets because quite often you can very very easily spend more on aftermarket than you did on the original kit um, and not everyone can afford to do that I mean I'm quite fortunate I have a limited disposable income um, for modeling um, so if I want the aftermarket I'll buy it but that's not to say that it makes my model any better than someone who who is built completely out of the box um, and is a skilled modeler and, and they achieve some fantastic results. So this this whole you must buy the PE set, you must buy the resin aftermarket, you must no, you don't. If you want to, fine. If you can afford it and and you think it will make your model look more like you want it to look then yeah go for it but there's no I think sometimes it can be a bit of snobbery around the, the builds and um, oh they haven't used PE they haven't used resin they haven't so what who cares if it looks like it, the thing it's supposed to look like then who, who really cares so that's where the seats will sit anyway the seats are done um, 
and a lot quicker than if we were doing surgery on on the seat bottoms and everything else. Um, again, we're whiting out so so much. Um, let's take those out, but, and they fit onto the chassis perfectly. But as I said, we're not going to glue them in place because we're going to paint the seats separately. Um, but yeah, dead simple, two pieces each, um, and there we go. They're done. Um, if anyone does have suggestions on this whiting out issue, then I'm more than happy to. Uh, take that on board because it's it, it's frustrating for me to try and show you what I'm doing excuse me slurping coffee um, but it's also must be frustrating for the person watching it because I'm talking about something they're like well I can't really see it um, but I'm not sure what I can do about it really I'm trying the overhead camera on this part to see if that helps but at the moment I don't think it really is um, due to the colour of the plastic really this pale pink but anyway we digress so moving on to step seven which is essentially construction of the dashboard and, and the front um, so again as we were talking about you do get some replacement parts in resin so you get the front front of the vehicle um, there's a little bit of flash there with a PE grill and you also get this bit which is a, a tarp roll but what they've done is they've built in the air vents um, for the dash so we're going to have a look at the kit parts and again see if we're going to gain anything by using the resin so the kit part itself and again we're going to wire out and there we are let me switch that off and see if that helps so there's the kit part we have quite a nice detailed grill um, if that will pick that up, so that looks okay. And um, we actually got more detail on it because we've got the two indicator lenses and side lights. Whereas on the resin part, we have just one each side. Hmm. And then this piece. So if we can see, hopefully this will pick it up a bit better. So as you can see here. I'll say as you can see here we have the air vents that are molded in and then obviously that will sit on top and we have this tarp roll at the front <clears throat> interesting so we shall we shall see so if we start constructing the uh, the front itself so what the call out is is we need a1 which is this bit here which is the main front now there's no engine in this kit so obviously it will just be all bonnet down etc we need a14 we need a28 which is the front A15, which are the pedals, and we need A29, which is the dashboard itself. B31 which is the kind of uh, bit of the dashboard moulded in and the footwells etc so we've got all the parts let's clean those up a bit see if we need to go in with the sander as well whatever's going to be visible
step door so that you can hear coughing in the background. She's uh, getting ready for work. Um, let's hope it's not uh, the dreaded virus. I'm sure it isn't. And the dashboard itself. So we do have a bit of flash on here. So we'll just take that off really gently with the uh, the blade. Nice sharp blade, new blade. Just makes life that much easier. Um, for the actual cost of replacing the blade, it's pence. Um, particularly with these Swan Mortons. Um, I like to, before every kind of new step, um, just make sure my blade's nice and sharp and just replace it. Um, because blunt blades, firstly, you're going to have to go over way many times that you need to and you risk slipping um, cutting yourself damaging the actual part itself and as we were saying once you come to commit to paint those things will be visible so we try and uh, use a new blade is, is the moral of that little story and the pedals So, construction of it itself, so we've got the, the main bit here, um, and we've got this um, bit here, which is essentially, that's going to fit onto the side there, and what it should do is allow us to attach the, um, <sighs> what's the word, steering rod? that the steel wheel attaches to and it just keeps it square keeps it in place um, so that's not actually a part that's going to be massively visible at all once the wings are on um, but it just gives us that uh, locating hole um, for the steering pin rod it's not the steering rack I know that um, shaft maybe <laughs> I don't know. Someone will, sh I'm sure, correct me in the comments, which is fine. Every day is a school day, and that fits fine. So, a little bit of extra thin on there. And we will slot that into place, nice and square. Ready for, for the steering shaft, I'm going to call it, to, uh, to fit onto there. So, then the front itself. So it's worth, as we've got the resin bit, just having a look. I'm just interested in, in the actual fit of the, of the resin part. And actually, it does fit very, very well. Um, however, when we compare that to the kit part, I mean, I know you'd put the PE grill on and the Land Rover badge and everything else, but there is actually very little difference in um, the, the the quality of the moulding if, if you like um, and actually there's more detail on the kit part so I'm going to go with the kit part which will dry fit and that is pretty much perfect slots into place and there's no glue on there whatsoever um, you have got these lines here, but actually on a real Land Rover, you've got those lines there because it is a very modular vehicle, that, you know, and that's why they're so successful because if something gets damaged or needs replacing, you, you will bolt it and put a new one on and away you go. Um, so that's just the Land Rover way, and it's served them well for decades. So, so no glue on there at all dry fitted and it fits pretty much perfectly so we'll put some glue on there to hold it in place sod's law isn't it no one's rang me or text me or anything for days really apart from the missus um, sit down to do a bit of filming 
Ah, my phone's going nuts, so we'll ignore that. And I'll catch up with them once this bit's done, once the video's done. So, yeah, there we go. So, I'm gluing from the underneath, or the underside, because that avoids, as best we can, any glue marks on the, on the you know, the upper bit of the the vehicle um, which will be seen so if we can glue from the underside in a bit that's not seen then that's the way to do it so then the main bit which is the the floor pans and everything else so the pedals go into this slot here just here and then it's just one piece and it goes in so we'll put the pedals in first and then we'll attach the the, the dashboard itself um, so I'm sure they're going to fit first time, hopefully. Which they do. Perfect. So, as I did with the other bit, what we want to try and do, if we can, is glue from the underside the bit that won't be seen. Not that you're going to see a great deal of these anyway once it's all built up and seats added and stowage and everything else but if we can use the other side then that's what we're going to do just minimizes any glue residue or, or marks and that fits perfectly and it's easier to do that before you attach this to the uh, the front of the vehicle so, front of the vehicle, we've got some locating holes there, and then on this bit, we have some locating pins. So, that should, oh, dropping everything as I mentioned in my last video, that should fit perfectly. And typical Tamiya, Tamiya, or however you want to say it, is superb and it works very very well so that's in place and again there's no glue on there that's just dry fitted so if we flip flip the part over and then we can see exactly where we need the glue and again we're using the underside to minimize any actual glue residue on the, on the kit itself or on the bits that are going to be seen don't need loads it is really good glue and it will after a few minutes hold that firmly in place so just a little bit of pressure just to bring it home and there we go all done pedals are on and we've done it so now it's telling us to fit the dashboard now what we're lacking on the kit part Oh, that's me being too eager because I'm aware I'm being watched <laughs> or hopefully being watched. So it's telling us to fit the dashboard. The compass we're going to come back to because we've got some PE for that, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, so fitting the dashboard. Now, because we've got this resin piece here, what we're going to have to do is skip along slightly and just position the bonnet in place to see how this resin part fits and if we're going to need to do any surgery. Well, firstly, if we're going to use it um, or if we're going to need to do a bit of surgery and trim a few things and, and what have you um, in order to get it to fit 
because it is an addition and it does give you the air vent detail. So once the bonnet's on, and that fits perfectly, so we're only going to dry fit the bonnet at the moment. And then this resin part should fit just there, over the top of the bonnet. Now obviously we've got the, the actual resin sprue bit at the minute. So everyone's going to lose their minds now because I'm working with the resin and I'm not wearing a mask and my desk isn't wet but I'm literally just going to get rid of that it's almost hit me in the face just so I can see now health and safety warning <laughs> if you're working with the resin you should be um, wearing a mask wearing gloves um, and ideally if you're cutting it and what have you um, then ideally you want to be doing it on like a, a damp surface to capture any of the dust or as best you can capture the dust um, because resin is very bad for you very bad indeed um, so I've been a bit naughty there right okay so I think we are going to use that part so what we're going to do is we need to because it doesn't fit square which is a bit annoying so the one side does the other side doesn't so off camera what I should do is I should just start to sand away here because I do if I'm going to start sanding resin I want the damp surface to capture the dust and put my mask on and everything else so I'll just start to sand this away here a little bit so that it sits flush and I'll do that off camera um, and then come back in the next part and you can see exactly what I've done there um, it may be I think take that bonnet off he says I mean that's dry fitting it's not coming off <laughs> it may be that on these little bits here we just need to trim the plastic off so that we can fit it on maybe that would work Uh, and clean up the resin piece and, and the moulds and just get it in place um, and then on, on the actual bonnet itself we have the hinges here which I'm going to cut off because actually with the tarp roll over the top so it doesn't fit flush at the minute on top of the bonnet and with the tarp roll over the top those hinges aren't going to be visible we've got the bonnet pins and catches here so it's not too much of a a major issue um, so we'll, we'll do that off camera so I'm going to leave the bonnet off so moving on we need to attach the wings <coughs> and the dashboard the dashboard can go on that's not going to affect the resin at all or the resin part we want to add hair there so having a hairy face will do that so let's get the dashboard in place now 38 minutes so another few minutes guys and then we'll, we'll call this a day if we can get the dashboard on the wings um, because I'm very very conscious of the length of these videos really um, so that that fits fine so what we'll do is a little bit of extra thin in there because that's not going to be seen and then for the rest of the glue we'll actually glue the rear of the dashboard rather than the uh, the main bit it's going to attach to again just trying to minimize any kind of glue marks or, or anything that we can see once the kit's assembled and that should do us I think we'll pop that in place 
Now you would notice on the ref some of the reference pictures um, at the start of these videos the actual dashboard so in a Land Rover the dashboard is black it's like a black plastic but on some of the reference pictures I've seen and there's one at the start of these videos they actually were sprayed pink so with the exception of the dials so the steering wheel and everything it was sprayed pink um, because it's open top so I'm going to have a think about that as how I want the overall finish to be you know, I'm all for authenticity and everything else, but I'm not sure whether I want it to be pink. Um, we'll see. I'll see how, how we go. So, next thing we've got is, uh, as I say, we're going to come back to the compass because we've got some PE for that. We have the steering shaft, as I call it and the steering wheel itself, so parts A17 and A13 so this is A17, so again just be careful with this because these are going to be a little bit fragile as you're cutting them off particularly the steering wheel I've broken many a steering wheel cutting them off the screw over the years or warp them or and once they're warped they're very very difficult to get back in place so just be careful tidy that up a little bit perfect well perfect as far as it's going to get and then again on the, the sh shaft uh, that's stuck now. That's where I shall refer to it from from now on. So I'm just going to pop that down on the bench because I don't want to break break that as I'm trimming that little bit off there. Just turn it over just to make sure we've got everything off that we need to. Perfect. And that will do. So, the bit that we put on the inside of the wing here, there's a little locating hole on there. So, the shaft feeds through this hole in the dash and locates there. So, making sure we go the right way around because there is a little locating pin on the uh, on the part so we feed that through and that should just glue them in place on the locating part it's a little bit tight a little bit tricky with my Clumsy hands, which is where tweezers are our friend. So it does fit, it's just a little bit tricky because you're feeding it through the dashboard to get it in exactly the right, right spot without bending or snapping the part itself. does it does fit so now we're happy that it fits it's the right length etc we'll drop some glue in there and we shall use our tweezers just to guide it home really and now the glue's there that will assist us um, because we'll go a little bit then it will start to, to bond once that starts to bond we're happy that's in the right position and there we go 
So there we go. That's the uh, steering shaft. Oh, I'm like a 12 year old. That sort of stuff amuses me. And then just make sure that the steering wheel fits on it. Now, obviously when we built the, the front axle, we can have it positioned. Um, and that's why it told us not to glue it. I'm not going to. I'm going to have the wheel straight. So bearing that in mind, I'm going to put the steering, steering wheel on straight. If you're going to have the wheels at an angle, just be conscious. I mean, it's a minor thing, but... Um, particularly with these vehicles, I remember the tracking was all over the place if they'd gone across the, the desert and everything else. But just be conscious if you're going to have the wheels at an angle, just a little extra detail would be to make sure the steering wheel is turning in the way that you're going to have your wheels positioned, really. Um, in fact, shall I? Yeah, we'll have the wheels slightly to the right. So if I put the steering wheel on, just at that little angle which you can see so it's turning slightly right it's a three spoke steering wheel so it's turning slightly right and then the wheels will reflect that um, on, on the build itself um, and then what I'll do rather than have the wheels movable I will glue them in place once we get to that stage so what we are on 46 minutes wow so we're going to leave the bite off because I need to mess around with the hinges and things. So what I'm going to do guys is get the wings on. And glued. And then that will be it for today or for this part. Trim those up. Perfect. So obviously they're only going to fit one way. Fairly obvious. There's some little locating pins on the, on the side. And just make sure that we're getting those in the right position. Again, don't worry that you've got essentially what is a seam line because on a Land Rover you're going to have that. It's not like a, an aircraft or a you know, modern kind of BMW car where everything's nice and smooth. This is a Land Rover, bolt on wings, bolt on grill, bolt on everything. Um, so we're going to get those lines anyway. And this is an old Land Rover, you know, this is 1960s. So it's not going to be the modern, smooth body shell. And there we go. That's one. Make sure that's in the right place. Still make sure it's flush, obviously. You don't want it sticking out, but don't be concerned that you've got seam lines and just be careful because we have glued the steam wheel that's going to take a little while to set so just be careful as you're putting the wing on that you're not knocking that I have to re reposition and re-glue it and that's perfect so, so glue in there okay so we're now actually starting to look like a Land Rover, which is always a nice part of any build, I think, where, where you start to see it looking like it's meant to look. And there we go. So just move that slide. It's got a little bit too much to the right for my liking. And there we go. So we're done. So, we're on almost 50 minutes again, so uh, what I'm going to do is go back to face the camera, say my goodbyes, thanks for watching, um, and I'll see you all very, very soon. So there we go guys, um, again, it's gone on for a while, but the front is all assembled, um, 
we've had a look at some of the resin and started to make some decisions on what bits we're going to use, what bits we're not. Um, and as I said, as I was uh, down at the bench and, and on a different camera, just because you've got the aftermarket set doesn't mean you need to use all of it. Um, at the end of the day, it's your model. You take it as far as you want to take it and you use what you think is going to achieve the, the overall look of, of what you want it to look like when it's done. Um, so we're in lockdown at the moment. Um, unfortunately, I'm isolated at home um, for another week. Um, so there's lots of bench time. Um, hopefully I can get some more work done on this, some more videos put out, some more parts and, and, and really crack on and make some progress with it. Um, in the meantime, thank you all very much for watching. The feedback on the other two parts has been great. Um, so thanks for that. I hope you all anyone that's building it is enjoying the kit it is a quite a simple kit you're probably ahead of me now really um, but enjoy it stay safe stay at home stay at the bench happy modeling and i'll see you all very very soon cheers